but such theories ignore history. Yes, it's true that, despite laws like the Civil Rights Act, and the Voting Rights Act and Medicare, our society is still racked with division and poverty. Yes, race still colors our political debates, and there have been government programs that have fallen short. In a time when cynicism is too often passed off as wisdom. It's perhaps easy to conclude that there are limits to change, that we are trapped by our own history, and politics is a fool's errand. And we'd be better off if we roll back big chunks of LBJ's legacy. Or at least if we don't put too much of our hope, invest too much of our hope in our government. I reject such thinking. Not just because Medicare and Medicaid have lifted millions from suffering. Not just because the poverty rate in this nation would be far worse without food. Stamps and Head Start and all the great society programs that survive to this day. I reject such cynicism because I have lived out the promise of LBJ's efforts. Because Michelle has lived out the legacy of those efforts. Because my daughters have lived out the legacy of those efforts. Because I and millions of my generation were in a position to take the baton that he handed to us. Because of the civil rights movement, because of the laws President Johnson signed. New doors of opportunity and education swung open for everybody not all at once, but they swung open. Not just blacks and whites, but also women and Latinos. and Asians and Native Americans, and gay Americans and Americans with a disability.
they swung open for you, and they swung open for me. And that's why I'm standing here today because of those efforts, because of that legacy. And that means we've got a debt to pay. That means we can't afford to be cynical. Half a century later, the laws LBJ passed are now as fundamental to our conception. Of ourselves and our democracy as the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. They are foundational, an essential piece of the American character. But we are here today because we know we cannot be complacent. For history travels not only forwards, History can travel backwards, history can travel sideways. And securing the gains this country has made requires the vigilance of its citizens. Our rights, our freedoms they are not given. They must be won. They. Must be nurtured through struggle and discipline and persistence and faith. And one concern I have sometimes during these moments, the celebration of the signing of the Civil Rights Act. The march on Washington from a distance, sometimes these commemorations seem inevitable, they seem easy. All the pain and difficulty and struggle and doubt all that is rubbed away. And we look at ourselves and we say, oh, things are just too different now. We couldn't possibly do what was done then these giants, what they accomplished. And yet, they were men and women, too. It wasn't easy then. It wasn't certain then. Still, the story of America is a story of progress. However slow, however incomplete, 
however harshly challenged at each point on our journey. However flawed our leaders, however many times we have to take a quarter of a loaf or half a loaf the story of America is a story of progress. And that's true because of men like President Lyndon Baines Johnson. In so many ways, he embodied America, with all our gifts and all our flaws. In all our restlessness and all our big dreams. This man born into poverty. Weaned in a world full of racial hatred somehow found within himself the ability to connect his experience with the brown child in a small Texas town. The white child in Appalachia, the black child in Watts. As powerful as he became in that Oval Office, he understood them. He understood what it meant to be on the outside. And he believed that their plight was his plight too, that his freedom ultimately was wrapped up in theirs. And that making their lives better was what the hell the presidency was for. And those children were on his mind when he strode to the podium that night in the house chamber. when he called for the vote on the civil rights law. It never occurred to me, he said, in my fondest dreams that I might have the chance to help the sons. and daughters of those students that he had taught so many years ago. And to help people like them all over this country. But now I do have that chance. And I'll let you in on a secret I mean to use it. And I hope that you will use it with me. 7. That was LBJ's greatness. That's why we remember him. And if there is one thing that he and this year's anniversary should teach us,
if there's one lesson I hope that Malia and Sasha and young people everywhere learn from this day. It's that with enough effort, and enough empathy. And enough perseverance, and enough courage, people who love their country can change it. In his final year, President Johnson stood on this stage, racked with pain, battered by the controversies of Vietnam. Looking far older than his 64 years, and he delivered what would be his final public speech. We have proved that great progress is possible, he said. We know how much still remains to be done. And if our efforts continue, and if our will is strong, and if our hearts are right. And if courage remains our constant companion, then, my fellow Americans, I am confident, we shall overcome. We shall overcome. We, the citizens of the United States, like Dr. King, like Abraham Lincoln, like countless citizens who have driven this country inexorably forward, President Johnson knew that ours in the end is a story of optimism. A story of achievement and constant striving that is unique upon this earth. He knew because he had lived that story. He believed that together we can build an America that is more fair, more equal. and more free than the one we inherited. He believed we make our own destiny. And in part because of him, we must believe it as well. Thank you. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. One quotation source, Caro, Robert A. The years of Lyndon Johnson, 
The Passage of Power. Volume 4. Random House, 2012. Two quotation source, Johnson, L. B. Memorial Day Address. May 30, 1963. Three quotation source, King, M. L. Ohio Northern University Address January 11, 1968. Four quotation source, Caro, R. A. 2002. The Years of Lyndon Johnson, Master of the Senate, Volume 3, p.718. Alfred Knopf Incorporated. Five statement unconfirmed. Six quotation source, Johnson, L. B. Joint Session of Congress Address. March 15, 1965. Seven quotation source, Johnson, L. B. Joint Session of Congress Address. March 15, 1965. Barack Obama. Civil Society Forum Address. Delivered April 10, 2015, Hotel El Panama, Panama City, Panama. Thank you, President Varela. Thank you very much, Panama, for hosting the Summit of the Americas. And I thank everybody who's traveled here from across the region for the courageous work that you do to defend freedom and human rights. and to promote equality and opportunity and justice across our hemisphere and around the world.
I am proud to be with you at this first ever official gathering. Of civil society leaders at the Summit of the Americas. And I'm pleased to have Cuba represented with us at the summit for the very first time. We're here for a very simple reason. We believe that strong, Successful countries require strong and vibrant civil societies. We know that throughout our history, human progress has been propelled not just by famous leaders, not just by states. but by ordinary men and women who believe that change is possible, by citizens who are willing to stand up. Against incredible odds and great danger not only to protect their own rights, but to extend rights to others. I had a chance to reflect on this last month when I was in the small town of Selma, Alabama. Some of you may have heard of it. It's a place where, 50 years ago, African Americans marched in peaceful. Nonviolent protest not to ask for special treatment but to be treated equally. In accordance with the founding documents of our Declaration of Independence, our Bill of Rights. They were part of a civil rights movement that had endured violence and repression for decades. And would endure it again that day, as many of the marchers were beaten. But they kept marching. And despite the beatings of that day, they came back, and more returned. And the conscience of a nation was stirred. Their efforts bent, in the words of Dr. Martin Luther King, The Arc of the Moral Universe Towards Justice And it was their vision for a more fair and just and inclusive and generous society that ultimately triumphed.
and the only reason I stand here today as the President of the United States is because those ordinary people maids. and janitors, and school teachers were willing to endure hardship on my behalf. <laughs>